All right. Hi, Gabby. Hi, Sarita. <clears throat> Thank you so much for joining me here today on Volvo.com. It is February 23rd, and um, we're here to discuss gun control in America. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to just uh, tell you about two things quickly. Uh, the first is that right now this discussion is being recorded, and after our conversation is all finished, uh, I'll be posting this video to YouTube. Um, is that okay with both of you? Yes. All right, great. Yes. So re okay, great. Uh, and then on top of that, um, just the only other thing I wanted to bring up is that here at Vonvo, we're all about having civil and valuable conversations. Uh, we do not want there to be any personal attacks against anyone. Um, and past that, are you guys fine with those ground rules? Absolutely. I'm good. All right, great. Civility rules. Okay, perfect. So let's get right into our discussion. Um, just to start off, for all of our people, all of our viewers who are listening in right now, um, Sarita, would you mind just giving a quick background of yourself and why you're so passionate about gun control in the U.S.? And then, Gabby, you can go ahead right afterwards. Perfect. Sarita, did you hear what I said? Sure. Uh, first of all, I like this topic. I am from Chicago, born and raised. I'm currently a facilitator. Yes. Could you hear me, Pac? Yeah, we hear you great. Speaking. You're good. Can yes. you hear me now? Yep, we hear you fine. I turned off the camera. Could you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you great. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll, okay, great. So good morning. Uh, my name is Sarita Villa. Uh, thank you, Max, for inviting me for this very important topic uh, that's only affecting Chicago, but nationwide. Uh, I am currently a um, restorative justice practitioner, facilitator. And with that said, the reason I'm so interested in gun control, I've always been passionate about it. But unfortunately, I was affected personally 10 years ago, October 26, 2002. My brother was killed as he stopped to help a homeless person in the company of his pregnant wife here in Chicago. So prior to that, I worked for the police department, civilian. I've done domestic violence advocacy, victim advocacy, and looking for and searching for uh, help for not only my sister and our family, I just fell into this so much important work. So I just accepted as, as it, that that was my best destiny, so this is mine. So I've educated myself and also been part of the Illinois Campaign to Prevent Gun Violence. I've been the Latino or Hispanic or community liaison. So I'm just uh, learning and there's a lot to learn. However, in the, in, in the meantime too, with all the violence and all the killings that, that's been happening, it's not only gang affiliated. So my awareness and, and my part would be that gun control should be common sense gun control and, and just as a whole. And I'll, I'll stop there because I'm sure we're going to continue as we converse. Right. So basically that's, that's where I'm coming from. Right. Perfect. And go ahead, Gabby. <clears throat> All right, my name is Gabby, and um, I'm actually here as a part of a group uh, called Organized for Action, and um, I guess what I'm here for is I want to make sure that we all get the word out. Um, I'm a, I, with, the, with the Sandy Hook shooting that we had, um, with all of the gun violence that's occurred, uh, we've got to start stepping up and doing something. And lots of us are wondering, well, what can we do? How can we do it? And so um, I, I got connected with, um, um, with uh, uh, OFA. And uh, so the plan of action is to uh, make uh, Congress put up a vote. Um, he, uh, the president at, the, at his State of the Union had indicated that these victims uh, from, uh, from Gabby Giffords, to the Sandy Hook uh, shootings, to all of these other uh, mass shootings that have occurred, these victims deserve a vote. And um, he's proposed some legislation, which I hope that we can discuss. Uh, if we have uh, some uh, difference of opinion, I know um, that the Second Amendment has come into question. I've done a little bit of research on that. So hopefully we can come together, come up with some uh, great ideas, 
and get these things forwarded to, to our uh, government officials so we can at least force a vote so we know where the people stand and move this country forward. Right. Good uh, enough? Thanks, yeah. Max, for letting me on. Yeah, no problem. Uh, we're, it's a pleasure to have both of you. Um, so, you know, now to really kind of get into um, the thick of things with this topic, um, you know, so really, ultimately, how do you guys um, interpret, you know, this, this conflict, uh, this, this subject? Um, are you guys, do you guys kind of separate the uh, differences between, you know, those who come on Vonvo and say this is a violence problem and a, a mindset inside of America versus uh, an actual like handgun problem and, and guns problem? What are, you, what are your, how do you guys define really the problem right now? Sarita, you go first. Okay, I, I think you've touched on both. I think it's a little bit of both. It's definitely a gun problem. Um, guns are manufactured for one thing and one thing only, and that's to kill. I mean, we're living in the city. We're living in cities. Uh, in regards to the mindset in America, that would be another piece uh, of the puzzle. And I think just working in all these pieces to put together a nation because we're saying that it's just gangs or it's just coming from lower economical neighborhoods or urban areas. And, and I think that's where we failed. We failed, you know, the lack of education. And I think it's all together. So it's a little bit of everything. However, because of us and other, other tragedies that, that we've had, it's brought more people there and in America. But, but I think it's a little bit of everything. So yes, to my answer would be, it is a lot of control. So we are a society of law. We're a society of that because of who we are, that we do need to come in a way we're not talking of, we're just talking about just plain gun, gun uh, common sense gun laws. And what we also very interested in part of what you do is restorative justice is to be inclusive. So on top of that, yes, we do need to make programs for the community, for the mindset, for the families, for for the families at risk, whatever that might be. And I don't like to use that word because now we're categorizing or stereotyping. But so it, it needs to be inclusive of all. Perfect. I like what you said, Sarita. May I? May I? Yeah, yeah. Go, yeah, go ahead. This is. A bit? Yeah, go ahead. This is easily just uh, all about having a conversation with one another. I'm just here to kind of uh, you know chime in when necessary. So go ahead. Beautiful, Sarita. I love what you said, and I guess what we want to do, um, and I think one of the things the president wants to do is we're talking about uh, gun control, and I think his message is: Look, I don't want to control the guns. I don't want to take the guns from anyone, but what we want to address, and I think everybody across the board, whether you're on the right or on the left or in the center, uh, we should be talking about gun violence prevention. And I think that's where the, the thrust of it really is. And um, those are some of the things we want to talk about. Um, how can we curb gun violence prevention? Uh, or how, how, can we, how can we make this happen? And, um, uh, and, and I don't believe that by um, addressing gun violence prevention that we're going to be impeding on the Second Amendment. I think there is a way we can all come together to make this happen. Now, granted, unforeseen occurrences are going to happen. You can't make anything foolproof 100% as long as you have the human factor in it. But we can certainly make it more difficult and, um, and, and a little bit more... Uh, yeah, uh, challenging. If you're if you if you're hell bent on on, on, on murdering uh, innocent people, we can make it as difficult as possible for that to happen. I, I think that's what we've got to look at. Is does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So uh, go ahead, Sarita. And add to it, and one gun taken off the street, which could be a legal gun that was stolen, a legal gun that was lost, could kill. Me many, many lives. So the kind of things we're talking about. We're talking about uh, not only conceal and carry, but we're more talking about registering your gun. I've worked for the police department many, many years, and you'd be surprised to tell homeowners or gun, or gun owners that have bought their guns legally for whatever reason, do not report them. Or if they are stolen because of home burglaries, 
that gun just trickles down. And, and so a lot of these guns on, on the street, I, w- I would imagine, and I don't have that stats in front of me, that were probably at once time about me. About this. Weapons, they those are totally to be illegal. I don't think there is a place in the city or any country. On, we're not talking about rifles for hunting. We're not talking about collector display. We're talking about the magazines. We're talking about hey, hey. kill and affect our world, our nation. And, and as we see, look at, sadly, look what happened uh, with this young girl that was just killed by, by her boyfriend. And, and go ahead. Yeah, Sarita, I was just going to say, there's been a, as you've been speaking, there's been a few times. So, as you've been talking, there's been a few times where you cut out. So could you go back to that turn off camera button? Yeah. Great. Great. So okay. did you did you want to finish up your point or was it did you want Gabby to respond? Um, I don't know how much you heard of it, so go ahead and respond. I don't have to be repetitive, and I'll chime in if I feel like you right. guys missed something. Well, unfortunately, I didn't catch a lot because it, it, it faded in and out. Um, but um, if it's all right, yeah. and when the time is right, um, I'd like to go ahead and um, share with you what the president's plan, plan includes um, regarding the gun violence prevention um, and maybe we could hit on some of those points and see whether or not those ha- have a chance of moving forward or not. If yes, yeah. what can we do? If no, what's the problem with it? Right, right. So, so what, are some, what are some of those items in the recent president's proposal that you think are 100% you know, items that need to um, you know, be, be pushed forward with, Gabby? Well, here's what he says. He says that most gun yon- most gun owners use their guns legally and responsibly. And, and I agree with that. I'm a gun owner. And the president now strongly believes in an individual right to bear arms. I believe that as well. But we need to take action to better protect our children, the communities from tragic mass shootings like the one in Newtown, Connecticut. So uh, what he's asking is that each of us speak out to sh- and show legislators that now is the time. It won't be easy, but if we can save one life, it, it'll be worth it. And here's what he wants to do. He wants to do four things. He wants to close the background check loopholes to keep guns out of dangerous hands. He wants to ban military-style assault weapons and high-capacity magazines and taking other common sense uh, measures. He wants to make schools safer. And he wants to increase access to mental health services. Those are his four goals. And which ones of those do you think would have, do you think all of those should easily be passed? Do you think some of those are better than others? I mean, what, what, what's your take on those, those cover of, of a wide, you know, span of different, you know, um, factors in the gun control discussion, right? So. Well, I'll tell you, I'm real laser focused on doing background checks. I, I think that has some. I think that has something that has possibility of being passed by both by both sides. So that's what I'm pushing for: um, that we at least do the mandatory background checks. That it's nationalized. That everybody does the same thing. Uh, I know when I went to apply for a um, for a for for, a, for my FOID card for my firearms identification card, I had to fill out a few questions. Did you have any mental illnesses? No, this, that, and I got the card, no issue. I also know someone who lied on their application and got it, and they have had mental issues. So, um, and, and they got it. So that's what I think we need to tighten up a little bit, um, because if you, if you wanna get a gun, even if you've gotta take a little quiz and, and answer some questions, um, you, you can lie, you can still get it, um, so it's a joke to me. It needs to be a little bit more uh, comprehensive. Now, um, as far as the magazines and these high-capacity weapons, I believe they need to go. 
Um, and if you don't want to let go of those really nifty semi-automatic rifles, then let's cut down how many uh, rounds we can put in there. And, 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 and my, my goal would be 10, no more than that. Um, I can go ramble on and on, so I'll stop now. Right, yes, Sir, Sarita, what, what are your thoughts on... Um, I'd some like of to intercede, Gabby, although... You go, go ahead, Sarita. User both cut and okay. User both cutting out. I'm getting a delay. Hopefully, you could hear me. But I think I got most of your points. Thank you, Gabby. Um, yeah, what you. I'd like to interject also, and I agree with, in regards um, to the background checks, we, we do have currently. You do have a background check. However, what we were pushing for too is to have a background check more often. However, as human beings, you know, we go through different emotional and mental states in our lives. So to have a background check and a FOID and 10 years later, you're purchasing a, a weapon or five years later, that may, that might be one day too late. So background checks and mental background checks is very, very important. Uh, you also made a good point in regards, um, for example, the loophole at the gun shows. I mean, we, we could buy weapons and most of these, these people there are probably are going to be gun collectors. However, it could be that one person that gets a hold of the weapon there and there is no background checks. And, and it's very easily, and you could buy a gun in America very easily. Assault weapons is another story, again, for me. In regards to the rounds, I understand if you're a collector, you, you might want to have one, but then if you're a collector, you're not actually going to use the gun. I believe there's a bill there also in regards uh, for the magazines, and that's kind of what we're pushing for also. Is the sales of, of, of the magazine or such a one? I like that. I like what you said. This is great that we should maybe do background checks more often because someone brought up the point what if you're 55 years old, you yes. get your gun, and 15 years later you suffer from dementia? Mm -hmm. Things can change on, on, in our brains. Um, and I think that's a great idea. And I think someone mentioned here on the chat, what about doing it like uh, like cars? And, and, and that's another thing I was thinking. Why can't we have gun uh, gun violence prevention? By if, we, if you want to buy a gun, let's treat it like we, can, we treat cars. You got to get a background check because you got to go, if you go to the, to the DMV, they check your, your record. If you've had DUIs, well, you're not going to get a license. And uh, so... Uh, right. And, and, then, and then you also have to take a test. So maybe we need to learn how to clean our guns because how many people shoot themselves cleaning their guns? Um, we also need to learn how to aim and fire, learn some gun safety things. I didn't have to learn any of those things, and I got, and I got a gun. So I think that should be mandatory. And what about those people who get shot? If a car kills somebody, your insurance pays for it. Why can't we mandate people who are buying these semi-automatic weapons and these these wonderful huge magazines make them get insurance and make them pay a pretty good premium and then we can use that those that that money to maybe pay towards um, the victims of gun violence right and, and uh, so, I, so and make them qualify every so often uh, make them go in and 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 do. Uh, do a mandatory going in and, and, and using them, and then and then not, not allowing them to go home. Keep them in a in a place where uh, like like in a in, in a gun club or something that that they can only shoot them there, they can only access them there, and, and that's it. Because there's no other reason to have a semi-automatic weapon. I understand my rifles and I understand my guns. People like to hunt. People like to 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 to, to do skeet shooting. So those are good reasons to have your guns, and also for self-defense, of course. Right, so Gabby and Sarita, um, I wanted to run by a question which one of our audience members uh, brought up, um, and that is from Jason, and he says, Gabby, how does a magazine uh, with a limit of 10 reduce violent crime? A criminal can have multiple magazines. So, you know, can you kind of address that specific question? Absolutely, um, and it just so happens... Um, when, when uh, the uh, shooting occurred where Gabby Giffords was, uh, the guy only had, I, I, I he had, I'm trying to remember what, he, what his rounds were, was it 30 rounds? 
But nonetheless, what happened was he ran out of he ran out of his bullets. He he was getting ready to reload a magazine. Oh no no it had ten it had ten rounds. He was getting ready to load his magazine, and someone knocked that magazine out of his hands, and that enabled the rest of the people then to go ahead and and take him down. So. Uh, that was what I thought was really pivotal. It wasn't someone with, with another gun that saved more people from getting shot, but it was the fact that he had to stop, change his magazine, and while he was changing it, they were able to get him. Two more people would have survived um, if, if he would have had less bullets in there. But um, I think that's, that's I mean, we, we can't stop it from happening, like I said, but maybe we can cut it down. Sandy Hook was just incredible, and, uh, and, and, and while people might end up getting hurt in, in gun violence, we, I, I know we can't totally stop it, but boy, if we could cut it down to as little as possible and to increase the chances of the gunmen being taken down, that would be huge. Is that good enough? Yeah. I, I, I agree with Gabby. I agree. Uh, I think one life sa saved is many lives um, so in regards to Jason's question, um, and again, remember, just like an order of protection is just how much we're going to enforce it. We can have all these laws and all these bills, but they have to be enforced. However, most people are going to abide by them. And what we're talking about is, again, going back to the original purchase of it. Hopefully we could control it by exactly the same way we do cars. And exactly the same way we register even our bikes in some towns. So why can't we do that and enforce it more out of weapons? So, and that's where I come also as part of our awareness is to bring awareness and education to people that are thinking we're not saying we're going to ban all guns. We're not saying that. And this is where the confusion or the NRA or other people that are not aware, we need to stop and listen to each other and what we're talking about. We're talking about, again, the background check the loophole, we're talking about the magazines, so we're talking about specific bills right now, and those are the ones I think that it's a start. Again, we're not going to save the world, but it's a beginning as we learn to live better and as we learn it. Again, as you said earlier, Max, it is a mentality. Our America, so we're socialized by the media, you know, again, have to go back and watching what our children are playing with, the violent games, so it's a piece, a little bit of everything, so... I think it's very important, and again, it's common sense. Why would we want a magazine that has 10 rounds? I, I, I don't understand that. Maybe one of your audience might be able to, to, um, to stress it or to express what, what they feel on it, and um, that, that's where, where my stance is at. Right. Uh, Gabby, did you want to follow up with anything, or do you want me to uh, you know, come in here and ask a new question, perhaps, if you guys are interested? Go ahead and ask a new question. All right, you got it. Um, so, you know, my next then question would be uh, this idea behind a mental health, you know, concern inside the country. Um, you know, what is what do you guys believe the impact that is having on this crisis and then how it's, you know, interpreted in the media? Um, you know, all, all, all in all, is there... Is there a one-stop shop solution here, or does every one of these items need to get, you know, tackled individually um, in order to really begin to try and make some headway or progress? Um, and I guess if you want to just focus on the mental side of that, it was kind of like a two-part question, I guess. I'm sorry for that. Gabby. That was a long question. Yeah, go ahead, Gabby. You know, um... Uh, under President Ray, uh, under President Reagan, um, he 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 uh, was one of the uh, he, he kind of spearheaded some changes that have kind of brought us downhill. And one of those things was mental health. Uh, he really cut that back, and so we found lots of people on the streets um, that should have been uh, handled, um, should have been in, in mental health care. And I think we're still uh, dealing with that today. There's just not enough mental health care out there which is one of the things the president would like to readdress again. Um, and so I guess the question is, what falls under mental health? Can we find everybody with that? No. But again, 
it's a start. We've got to start moving somewhere. We've got to move forward. And addressing mental health is a real big deal. Now, one of the things that I found really interesting, I had read um, um, uh, an article, and I believe it was in Mother Jones, um, and it talked about the correlation between mental illness and actual lead. Now, I know that we're taking lead out of gasoline, we're taking lead out of paint, but still, the bullets are made of lead, and um, you're not supposed to touch them. But how many people in the, um, in, in, in the inner city, for example, um, can afford to buy um, bullets? So maybe some of them, I, I guess you refill them or something. I know my dad does that. So you're handling lead. Uh, if you were to do tests, you would find in the inner city that there's a tremendous amount of uh, much more lead uh, concentrations than there are in the rural areas. And I think that affects how our brain is hardwired, and I think that contributes to um, an awkward type of thinking that causes us to go into, um, that, that could contribute to gun, gun violence. So my theory even is that we ought to be checking our cities and the, or any cities, especially where the crime is the highest, where there is lead. Is there lead concentrations there? Is that something that's affecting the way people are thinking and acting? Is it, is it causing us to be more violent? Is it contributing to that? And, and I wish that would be something they would check out um, because I believe there is a connection there. But uh, mental health is definitely something we need to look at. Unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of details on how that's going to be tackled because what's considered, uh, you know, where do you draw the line as to, yes, you're, you're prone to depression, but you can have a gun or you're bipolar, you can't have a gun. So those things, I think, would need to be worked out, I think. Right. Um, I'm going to go in with that question also in regards to the mental health issue. Again, because of our previous um, president, also we had had a lot of cuts, especially in the city of Chicago. The biggest cuts were the nonprofits, which that includes my work. And a lot of it was mental health. There's a lot of folks out there that are still trying to do the work. However, there's no budget. So there's only so much that we could do. For those, for those of us that do grassroots, we continue to support an advocate, but there's really nothing out there for people. But what I want to bring up, too, that might hit home with most versus just the urban, because they sometimes put that aside, unfortunately, with the Chicago problem, it's a gang problem, it's a color problem, um, that uh, to bring it back on suicides, because of our economical status right now, not only in the city of Chicago, but nationwide, we, we've seen more suicides. We've seen more suicides back to mental health issues, but the main one I want to bring up is the suicides and veterans. And veterans, because they're kind of transitioning back in, and because of the issues and the mental health problems that they have that have been unrecognized, um, a stat that I would put out that... There's an estimate of 18 suicides per day amongst the uh, veterans. And, and that issue that nobody's even talking about. I mean, suicide, domestic violence. So it's, it's, it's a violence, it's, and it comes back to gun and mental health. So again, as you started out, Max, it, it's just a piece. And I think as we, we move along, we just have to connect all these pieces and just be inclusive and be mindful of everything that needs to be tackled. And Gabby... That might be you and me, and I'm just at a different, in my work is what I do as a result of my brother being killed. I used to do grassroots and run and do the vigils, and those are important to do. And a lot of people say, well, what that's going to do? What's going to support and advocate the, the victims of the families? And sometimes that's important. It's not for everybody, but for those that it is, it's fine. So and then as we evolve, there's other issues. And, and so it's a big puzzle that we just need to keep continue. And if we just stop now, then there's no hope then we might as well just have a nuclear war. You know, we need to little pieces at a time, little steps. Might not see it in my lifetime, but again, we need to start somewhere and be with an open mind and be conscious of everybody. Again, we are in a society and supposedly uh, America is a free society. I, I bet you differ sometimes because we're so socialized. So I'm not sure how free we are, but again, this is the type of society we live in and so this is the way in my opinion and in my experience, in my work, we, we need to look at everything. So mental health is a big issue and a lot, again, has to 
do with the economical status. President um, Obama also is aware of that, and he's aware how the lower economical family with a family of two children cannot possibly live. So he's talking about increasing the minimum wage, which would help. But then again, where are we going to get that kind of money, and, and where does that put us? So, but it's a talk, and it's a beginning. Right. Gabby, did you want to uh, follow up on that? I think um, uh, I totally agree with Sarita. Uh, I'm not sure I think did we I need to. Up there? No, no, you're all good. You're done good. You're done good, Sarita. No, she's phenomenal. She's got some really good uh, points of view. I'm not. I'm not so clever with oh. the with, with, with the mental health issues. Um, what 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 my immediate drive is right now, and, and why I've. Um, it's just basically to fire people up to get letters to the editor to get things out because right now uh, in in, le in the in the judiciary committee we've got um, we've got legislation pending on the universal background checks. That's what's currently happening happening in the judiciary committee, and it's going to be uh, brought. Uh, uh, it's going to be getting to the Senate um, here by next month, uh, very shortly, and they're going to be bringing it to the floor, and um, and. It, and since it's focusing on background checks, um, my my impetus for being here is that we need to contact our representatives, our legislators, and we've got to tell them to vote for the in favor of it. Um, so that's kind of why you're seeing plans of action. We just had the group down uh, on Friday. There was lots of people out there, um, and, and that's where we're starting, but it's such a multi-pronged thing, just like Sarita said, uh, mental health needs to be addressed. But if we have some time, I'd also like to address the Second Amendment, because there are folks that, that, that are really clinging to that, and I understand the reasons for that, but I'd like to address just a few little things on that, if it's okay. Yeah, yeah, go if ahead. We can talk a little bit about that. Hmm? Go, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I would love to talk about this because everybody's talking about the Bill of Rights and the Second Amendment, and I, we did a little bit. We did a little bit of research, and of course, as we know, um, the the Bill of Rights, um, the the Article Two, um, was actually brought into effect in the year 1791, but already earlier in uh, 1776, they already started. Uh, with uh, the Bill of Rights, and the first one that I've got uh, was actually uh, written in Virginia, and it, it, is that all right if I just, it's not a very big section, I, could, I would love to read it verbatim, so, because ultimately the, the article was based on um, the, the Virginia Bill of Rights as well as the Massachusetts Bill of Rights, and it's kind of um, cohesive, and they... Go, anyways, go, go, says, go ahead, go ahead. It says that a well-regulated militia composed of the body of the people, and here's what I like, trained to arms, is the proper natural and safe defense of a free state, that standing armies in times of peace should be avoided as dangerous to liberty, and that in all cases the military should be under strict subordination to and governed by the civil power. So in a sense, the militias would be a pool of men who would become an army, so a standing army wouldn't be needed. But um, in Massachusetts, the Bill of Rights, uh, now this was the same year that they abolished slavery in, in that state, and, okay. and it, this was also uh, then written up, and it says the people have a right to keep and bear arms for the common defense, and as in time of peace, Armies are dangerous to liberty. They ought not to be maintained without the consent of the legislator, legislature, and the military power shall always be held in an exact subordination to the civil authority to be governed by it. Again, the fear was of a military ruling class, and so they wanted to keep it um, subdued under under the the people. And then, of course, the Bill of Rights basically says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. But what I take out of that is that it talks about a well-regulated militia. Well, if we're going to insist on 
having our semi-automatic rifles, and if we're going to insist on having 100 magazines, 100 bullet magazines or whatever, my opinion is then become well regulated. That means we get to regulate who you are, what you have. Maybe we can make you go to training once a week because we've got to keep you well regulated. And uh, perhaps maybe that's the, that's the way to do it. Of course, you need to pay to go do it. So again, then we've got the money that we can use for our victims um, to, uh, to take care of them because if, if you shoot somebody today and you're drunk, you don't have insurance to cover it. So these people get absolutely nothing. And um, maybe that would offset some of the damage that these shooters are doing. So Right. Right, Sarita, do you have any any take on what Gabby just read or just the Second Amendment in general? I'm here. She's coming in a little choppy. I don't know if you could hear me. Yeah. I, I heard a little bit, and she was going back to the Second Amendment, um, which, again, um, I agree. But if you look at the what I take out of the Second Amendment, yes, I to bear arms. However, the wording in there doesn't specify if we have the right to be in schools. It doesn't specify that we have the right to be in public places. So again, not talking about, we're talking, that's coming more to conceal and carry. We're not talking about taking your homeowner and you have a gun in your home for protection. We're not talking about those kind of rights taken away from you. We're talking about, okay, so as it is now, we can't go in certain places in the federal building and other buildings, you know, with cell phones, with liquids, to airports. So what is going to happen there? We're talking about, yes, we do have the right, but do we have the right to be in a public place if there's going to be children, to be in the public schools, to be in the library, to be at the theater, again, going back to what happened at the theater. So those are the kind of things and those are kind of the words that we need to take out and make amendments to. Again, we're not talking about if you're a homeowner, you do have it. This is different, totally different. And then we have laws that as a homeowner, yes, and this was in Evanston, and I worked at the time in Wilmette, or vice versa, where a homeowner did kill an intruder. But yet, and he had all rights to have that gun, but yet he got charged as second manslaughter because he killed a man, although it was a home invasion. So how are we to deal with that? And if we're dealing with that, again, with the example that happened in Florida, you know, it's a he, she, we, she, and it's bad enough with kind of traffic stuff that we had. A good example, earlier today I was in traffic, a man stopped, we just had a heavy snow in Chicago, and he's looking around, and this was an older man, I wasn't even stereotyping, and all of a sudden he went to the back and got a stick, I was like, my heart said, okay, what is he getting? He went to go clean his windshield off, you know, with his, to, to clean the snow off. Imagine if that would have been a rifle or a gun. So that mentality is how we want to live, too. Everybody reaches for yeah. something. We're thinking he's going to reach for a gun. And what's going to happen to the police? You know, we've seen people being killed with cell phones, you know, just recently, too. The police mentality, again, is a big, big part of it. And we're lacking. I know that we have a new chief of police. And, and yes, he's governing a little bit different because of what our last mayor and our last political, what they did, they're bringing in and they're breaking that morale. Again, they're breaking the morale, they're bringing people in from different cities, they're bringing people in, uh, I'm not going to name names, but from beyond. You, you, it has to be from that same realm, like if it's police, then if you're going to bring somebody in charge of the police, it has to be somebody with that experience, somebody that could advocate, somebody that could relate. I've been on the streets. Yes, McCarthy is, is, is someone like that, but he's from New York. He's not from Chicago. And I know he keeps saying New York has this and all the strict rules. So what are we? We already have a problem with incarceration and and maintaining them incarcerated. So that's another thing. So why don't we step back a little bit? The the previous previous um, chief of police that we have put that mentality in my whole career as working for the police. Never seen so many officers down. My heart would pound. How many officers have been killed on the streets in Chicago in the last five years? One, two, many. Again, Max kind of going to mentality. The guns are not against the police, but the police have put that message out. They've cut the caps because of lack of funds. They've cut many, many social programs because of lack of funds. And then it's the police out there, oh, we're against the communities. And so they're shooting at police. Born and raised in Chicago. Haven't seen so many police down. So, yeah, so it's, it has, again, to do a little bit 
of everything. And again, I know I'm being repetitious here, but I've been doing this work and it's just a lot. It's just not about gun laws. It's a lot more than that. It's about everybody being responsible. Gabby, I know you're from the Northwest suburbs. I thank you for being interested in this in this topic because a lot of people think it's a city problem. A lot of pe people think I can't relate. But once again, and that's a message that I'm going to put out too. It's everybody's problem. This is all our children yeah. because if 15 and 17 and 18 year olds keep getting killed, who's going to be here in 20 years to represent the adults of where we're at now? And what kind of society and mentality are they going to have? Right. Go, go ahead, I'll Gabby. Yeah, so what I'd like to say is, is just kind of piggyback a little bit on, on what Sarita said. Um, hopefully, am I, first of all, am I coming in, coming in all right, or should I take no, my video off? No, you're, you're coming in fine. You can continue. You're coming in fine. Okay. Okay. Um, what, what I would like to see happen is I would love for those who are listening to to talk about um, just just to get the just to get things started to 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 push um, an advocacy for background checks I think that is so important and then closing uh, the loopholes um, Sarita uh, indicated you know, we've got a lot of young kids getting getting shot well we've got private um, sellers who can sell to uh, to straw men basically um, without having to do the background checks, I can go to a gun show and, and buy a gun, and I don't have to go through a background check. So those loopholes need to be closed. Um, if I have an estate after I pass away, uh, anyone can get my guns, um, and, and nothing is checked. So I, I think um, those things are really, really important. We just need to do that. Now, just to reiterate, I'm not looking to take guns away. The president is not looking to take guns away. I have guns. Um, I don't keep them here. I, I, I keep them in another location, but I have them. Um, I, I like to do skeet shooting. Um, so, uh, and I, now I, I, I have a shotgun. Used to do squirrel hunting back in Mississippi, and I uh, used a shotgun. So. Uh, uh, I, I guess, because uh, I, I had seen a question here earlier, well, what if you get a bunch of people in? Well, I'm thinking if, uh, if you have a, a shotgun, that, that, that's, that's got a, a big, real big range. So I guess if you're facing two or three people, you shoot that gut, shotgun in that general direction, they're probably going to uh, get stopped. And, and I don't need 30 rounds of ammunition in, in a semi-automatic. Uh, but... Um, so, uh, but anyways, he, he's not interested in taking away guns. He just wants to decrease the chances of guns falling into the wrong hands. And so, so, um, so, I Gabby, all right with Gabby. So, yeah, sorry. What, yeah, what is? I, I'd like to allow her. Yeah, go, go, ahead. Sarita. Can I just? I want you to respond, and I'm just going to ask a quick question before you respond, and then you guys can address it afterwards. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I was just going to ask, so why then do you believe that this this uh, argument is turning into a argument over, um, you know, taking guns away versus not taking guns away? If you're saying that this is how, what he's communicating, why is it turning into a... Max, can, can, can I add something on? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Saria. Max, I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you. Maybe you could type your question if that was a question. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead, Sarita. Okay, I don't know if you could hear me. Um, I'm also I'm also looking at, at some of the comments. Um, I, I wanna I wanna uh, direct myself to Jason's question, where he's talking about uh, that I see the gun control only disarms the law-abiding citizens and not the criminals. I, I think this is a beginning, Jason. Um, I thank you for your comment, and I think a lot of our our or or a lot of the violence in Chicago sometimes are from from guns or from weapons that have been lost or stolen. 
However, there is a large amount, and anybody that's aware, it, it, this is more about illegal guns also. Uh, the city of Chicago, I don't know, I'm sure many of you know if you're interested in this topic, is really a porthole. It's really a porthole for a lot of the drugs and illegal guns in, the, in our country. It, it's connected to other cities, to other big drug cartels. So it, it's a big problem, and this is only a tiny, weeny bit of our problems. And again, I don't want to go out of topic, but each topic is very important to the violence and to the gun control. So a lot of our illegal guns is also even bigger than that. It's political, it's about drugs, about power, and it's mainly, at the end of the day, about money and power. So as a citizen, as part of a community, I think a community is larger and as a community, and anything that we do, that we are bigger than anything. So we must come together as a community, not only in the city of Chicago, but as a nation. Otherwise, we're going to be living like other countries where the guerrillas are. And I, that might be extreme talk, but they're going to start taking control because of money and power. And we all know those that have more money have control. So a lot of the guns that are flowing into the city of Chicago Yes, Jason, uh, they are illegal, and this might affect some of our abiding citizens, but if you're an abiding citizen, this is not going to affect you at all, because just like when you buy a car, register it properly, if you get your insurance, then you have nothing to worry about. You've done what you're supposed to do, but there's a lot of non-criminal citizens or, or people doing things, as we saw just in our legislative uh, that we don't know and that we're not aware of yet, but they're using our children and they're using other people. And, and I'm going to speak about Chicago. They're using, and I've worked with young people and I've worked with young men specifically, and they're using them for that they could gain money and power. So they're flowing through our, through our cities. And so if you're an abiding citizen, you really should be behind us because you're doing the right thing to begin with, and it's not going to affect you. It really is not. We're talking again about doing, um, going back to the loopholes and the gun shows. We're talking about the magazines. We're talking about for the assault weapons. We're talking about mental health and our children that are that are dying all over the United States should be declared a public health issue. That's part of my work. It's not only violence, but it is a public health issue. So with and, that, and, um, that's where um, I want to direct myself specifically to, to Jason. Go ahead. And, and you know something? Um, if I could just add, remember when we had the shoe bomber? Yes. Yeah. It, how many times did, 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 <laughs> did a guy put something in their shoes to blow up a plane before something was passed to we were, where we all have to take off our shoes? Right. And, and was he even successful in, in, in blowing up the plane? No, but boy, everybody jumped on board, and now I have to take off my shoes. And my argument is, well, I mean, the honest people have to take off their shoes. they got to wait in line to get on the airplane. And if the criminal wants to do it, he'll do it. Um, and, and so, you know, if, if we can be that pro proactive or reactive um, to, to, to somebody who was trying to blow up an airplane with their, with their, with their shoes... Why can't we just pass some simple gun legislation and, and do the mandatory background checks and close those loopholes uh, on how we are able to sell um, and transfer guns? It's, it's how, how many shootings have we had compared to how many planes have been blown up? You know, it, it doesn't make any sense. This is, this is, a, this is a, a huge priority. We've got to start somewhere. It starts with mandatory background checks. It starts with uh, getting a little bit uh, better in how to transfer the guns to, and to start getting these illegal guns off the streets. And if, if we just sit here and argue about, about it and we don't do anything and nothing gets done, I don't think that's a good thing. I think we need to come to a common ground. Yes, we have to be inconvenienced a little bit in order to hope to have guns because we're honest we have no bad intentions of shooting anybody but I don't have any intentions of blowing up a plane either and I still go through the inconvenience of 
doing what I have to do to get on the plane. Right. And so, can I ask each of you a question? Um, I want to ask you each a question. Uh, it comes from Jason, and it's kind of regarding the whole concept of, you know, then where do the limitations and the restrictions, you know, where does it end? If you're going to start with guns, then where does it end? Uh, what is your what is your question? What would be your response to Jason, where he says, you know, Gabby, what about the Oklahoma City bombing? City bombing. Should we have uh, to register the sale of fertilizer? So the idea that you know, once you start regulating one thing, like you know, strictly that causes harm, then you have to start regulating, mate, you know, everything. Do you believe in that argument, or do you see where people are coming from with it? We're, we're, we're regulating a lot of things already. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really don't know um, what what Jason is um, really visualizing. I look at the second uh, I look at the Second Amendment a little bit differently. The, or the article uh, I look at it a little bit different than he does. Um, I totally believe we need to regulate guns. Totally, um, we need to know uh, who's got them. I think, like Sarita said, we need to have to requalify every so often to make sure our state of mind is still in, in good working order. I think that was a great idea. And um, we need to do the background checks and we need to be, uh, be a little bit more regulated on how we transfer guns between private owners. We've got to get these straw buyers off off. off off the off the grid, we got We got to stop this from happening. So um, I, I I don't know what else to say. Right. Okay. Sarita, I, I could probably add on to that if you don't mind. In regards, yes. In regards to Jason, again, thank you for submitting and and very being active and looking at your questions. In regards to the question with the fertilizer, then what we need to do, and again, as a community. Um, be aware. I mean, if, I, if I'm a store owner or company owner and I notice that this person is not one of my regular customers or he's buying an excessive of this material that could be used, because I'm sure they know what they could be used, then he should maybe tap into it or take more information. And, and unfortunately, as a society, that's probably what it's going to come down to. Um, and, and awareness, educating, and everybody, because sometimes we could be neighbors, and we know we know that the people next door are always screaming, we know they're fighting, and we don't get involved, and everybody comes and stands on the sidewalk when someone is killed, and everybody says, oh my God, I knew that was going to happen. Oh, I, sh I always heard her screaming, but yet nobody was proactive to go knock on the door and say, are you okay? Nobody was proactive to call the police. So all I'm saying that as a community, going back to the basics, that we all should be involved and, and just caring enough to to be aware. And I'm not saying that we're all going to be snitching. On the contrary, look at it as a negative state, but really being caring and passionate. And if we can do that, then let the next person do it and make somebody aware of it. Because what it comes to, what, what it has come in our society as Westerners is it's me for me for I and it's not us or it's just me, 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 and how am I going to do this? How You know what I'm saying? So we need to get back to our basics and get back to a community, get back to a city as a society of who we are and what that society means. We're a group of people living together. And and so it's a little bit about everything, Jason. I mean, you've got great questions, and, and it's a lot. And again, how do the poor people... I, get these guns. Again, the flow illegal guns, but who's flowing them in the city? They're not making them in their basements. These guns are not just in no city of Chicago basement. Where these gang of leader people are, are living. So how do they get a hold of those guns? But that's a question that we need to put out there. And where are they coming about? Is anybody gonna gonna address that? So so how how would you address that that concept? Uh do either of you want to take that on and, and share how you would tackle that that concept? Because that probably relates directly to the violence item, right? And and you know, uh, and the uh, you know the illegal um, you know trading of these arms and stuff that's gang related, violence related. So how, how do you 
that's completely separate. Where do you go in terms of that front? Because that's directly, is that a majority of what's directly affecting the urban Chicago area? I'm not going to say it's the majority. We have had cases where they've been able to trip guns. And, and again, one gun could kill many guns. So we have that, that gun turn in and we get hundreds that are turned in. Uh, but I think a lot of the violence here is, yes, a lot of it is the illegal traffic that's coming through. But then we're going to have to talk about the drug issue, which that's not part or directly my issue. But then again, it has to be touched on. That's not my specialty that I could tell you. I mean, I'm aware of it and community meetings. And, um, yes, that that. There's a lot to do with it, and that's even bigger. How we can tackle that, it's another question to put out there. But again, for me, is coming back, taking these baby steps, and trying to move forward. And, and, and just, again, if you're an abiding citizen, like everything else that we do, that we have bills or laws that we have to follow as a society, then more than likely this is not going to affect you. The only time we're going to get affected is, again, living in the city of Chicago, look at our parkets, our taxes are going higher. We're going to be affected when the monetary concepts come in because, again, because we have to pay out of our pockets. But people must think that with this violence and designs, we are being affected because now we have to pay more for our prisons. We have to pay more and we'll be taxed more because we have to pay for the health care because of the cities or, or the towns, especially Chicago and the communities we live in. Our taxes are becoming higher while property value is going lower because of the violence. So it, it, it is affecting all of us indirectly. We, we don't see it that way, but it is. It, it really is. We need to start thinking that way. And again, and I'm going to say it again, and I don't think I could ever stop. We need to just regroup as a community. And no, we're not going to all agree, but respectfully agree that it is affecting us as a community society and what could we do about it. And again, they're baby steps. This is one issue because the gun violence, I mean, it's everywhere. It's nationwide. And again, I want to come back with the suicides. I want to come back with the domestic violence are just as high. The media always just portrays or the gang affiliated, the city of Chicago. But there's a lot more suicides and a lot more domestic violence issues than we're even made aware of. Yeah, we could quote statistics probably all day long, but remember, this is not about gun control. It really is about gun violence prevention and um, the mental health, closing the, the, the loopholes, and also, I think, not um, private sellers that sell to other people um, may also have to do a form of a background check before they can sell to someone else. I think, although it may not totally stop the illegal uh, gun trafficking that's going on now, it'll certainly be more restricted and it'll be a little bit more difficult. And um, hopefully then we're just reduced to people stealing a gun from someone, in which case the person who's had their gun stolen would report it to the police instantly and, and things would go from there. But at least it's a step forward. Like Sarita said, we can't make these huge, giant steps, but we can take small steps. And one of them is, excuse me, one of them is to go ahead and get a, a background check done <clears throat> and to uh, go ahead and close these loopholes in when we're selling the guns. Right. Okay, great. Um, ha you know, guys, we we've been speaking for just under an hour. Um, how are you both doing on time? Do you want to continue this discussion because there's more that we can talk about? Um, I don't know, you know, if you guys have some other things. You know, you've done an amazing job. Um, and we appreciate it. Would you like to continue the discussion? I would like to just add two things. Okay. What I would like to do, if anyone listening here would like to get involved. And, um, and help out in, in, um, in, in this area. Now, there's lots of other areas. Um, I would encourage you to go to uh, BarackObama.com, and uh, it is Organized for Action. There are many different things that we can all do. It's actually 
not geared towards liberals or conservatives. It's anyone who wants to move this country forward. I'm particularly interested in gun violence because to me it is the most pressing and the most urgent on the table right now, although other things are as well. And um, if you want to be active and speak your mind about uh, getting your representatives to vote up or down, that's what we need. They deserve a vote. Um, on, on these background checks, I want to force um, the House and the Senate to make a vote rather than not bringing it to the floor. It's got to be put on the floor. It's got to be voted on. We've got to see where they stand. And so that is the other uh, thrust, the, my other goal. And um, I would encourage you to go to the website. You can go to www.senate.gov. You can find out who your senators are. And um, you would find their contact information. You can write them, fax them, call them, and uh, get, tell them that you want them to vote. You can do the same thing with the uh, representatives. Uh, you can go to, hold on, i got to look this up. You can go to www.directoryofrepresentatives.house.gov, and you'll You'll put your zip code in, and you'll be able to uh, find out who your representatives are. Again, you'll get all of their contact information. And uh, tell them how you want them to vote. They do track what you do, even if, even if you feel you're not being listened to. Uh, you absolutely are. They do keep track of this stuff because they want to be reelected. And um, what we've done in the past, those of us who feel like we're not being heard, we've just not bothered to say anything. And the people who believe they're being heard have been making those phone calls. Right. So we've been coming in as the silent minority, the silent majority. We want to change that. Uh, we don't have the money, but we've got the voices. And we need to uh, get involved. And we got to keep the, uh, our representatives feet to the fire and make sure that they enforce what we want them to enforce. That small step uh, is background checks, closing those gun purchasing loopholes, those are real, real important. Please contact your folks, and if you want to get involved with uh, Organize for Action, go to my Barack. Go to BarackObama.com. It'll walk you through the steps. Say I'm in. It'll ask you for a three dollar donation. You don't have to do that. It always asks for that. But you, at least you'll start being connected, and you'll right. be able to start making a difference as well. I right. appreciate it. Right, and uh, so I guess just you know, my last question I would ask both of you is, uh, and I guess, Sarita, you can go first, is, you know, what sort of impact on a topic, we've had a lot of different discussions on Vaughnville recently about a lot of different topics. So what, in regards to gun control, I mean, what sort of impact would you like or do you think, uh, you know, something like Vaughnville could have in trying to, uh, you know, provide some uh, closure and clarity on this this topic of gun control. Uh, what, what I would think, Max, and thank you, uh, Gabby, for making such important uh, points. What I would like to see, maybe, um, my objective, again, for this is not to tell people what to do or how to do it, however, for them to become aware. So maybe prior or maybe in your postings, we could have specific bills we're working on uh, for that people could clarify my objective, at least if this is not the time for you to become involved, at least take the step to become aware or educate ourselves a little bit more. And if, if gun control is not what you want to be part of, but yet you're interested in regards to the violence, there's many other things we could be doing, uh, working with the community, working for advocacy, youth mentoring, there is so much out there that is a big piece of this violence, of the big puzzle. So yes, there's a lot of us working on, on the gun control, and I know, Gabby, you don't like to say it's about gun control, and, and I just don't like to start and make it sweet for anybody, but it is about gun control, and, and I just I'm not radical, and I like to come in a peaceful way, because that's who I am. I understand that. I understand that. However, sometimes we sugarcoat just a little bit too much, and again, it I'm not, and we're not here, and if they would stop and listen, we're not here to take away the guns. So if maybe, I don't know if that's even possible, Max, just to put a little awareness or they 
I have no problem know anybody knowing my information. The only reason my video is not there because it couldn't come in with my voice. I am not hiding, and, and this is what I do, and I believe what I'm doing, and of course, everybody is not, but there's a lot of other topics and issues, and if anybody is interested, um, yes, that, that, that would be a good topic, besides, because it, it's hand-in-hand hand with the gun control or with the violence, and, um, and I'm not offending or attacking you personally, Gabby, and I know that's the way you're... I don't you're feel attacked at all, my friend. But, um, yeah, yeah, and I know they've been telling us too because we're going to be having a lobby day, so we're calling it Advocacy Day, and we'll be out in Springfield. So hopefully, Gabby, I'll be talking to you. You could connect with me. Um, maybe Max could give you my information. Would love um, that. And, and we could, and again, if, and if this is not your issue for the audience that's listening, but you're interested in the violence, there's a lot of other things. For example. I'll be facilitating a peace circle next week in Hyde Park. And this is just to begin to be talking about the violence and be talking about it. as a community, uh, could we become involved, whether it's affected us directly or not. But unfortunately, especially in the city of Chicago, somebody always knows somebody that's been affected by gun violence. So I'll close yeah, no, with I'm that. For... And yes, I was short on time. Go ahead. I was short in time, but I get involved again. This is my passion, but I'll have to be signing off. And I thank you for this opportunity. And I think this is a good, um, a good, via internet show that that you're doing here, Max. And and I'm sure it's going to grow. And and yes, we should be talking um, about a lot of different issues because they're all in sync with the gun control. Okay, great. And Gabby, I think this will keep growing. I think it's going to keep growing, Max. This is, it's easy to get to. It's easy to log on. And uh, you've, got, you've got a great audience here. We've got some great questions, great comments. I see great dialogues. Can't address them all. I'm just fired up about getting, uh, getting the word out uh, to, make our, to uh, put our uh, public officials um, on, on the spot, make them uh, check their hearts, check their minds, and check their loyalty. Are they with the uh, gun lobbyists? Are they with the gun manufacturers? Or are they for the lives of the people? Um, are we going to write letters to the editor encouraging our guys to, to vote in the right direction? Again, we're not looking to take guns away, but we're looking to regulate it because we're looking to make sure that we don't, um, that we prevent um, gun violence. That's my whole thrust. Guns are fine, but we don't need semi-automatic rifles. We don't need 30 uh, round clips. I think if we have 10 maximum, we're in good shape um, for all those that need to have them. And uh, again, uh, please uh, keep talking about it, keep debating this. We've got to keep this going until we see some uh, positive uh, resolutions and until uh, we reach the, the levels where we need to reach to get some action. Thanks all for joining, and thank you so much, Max, for letting me come on. No problem. You, you guys did great. Thank you so much, um, and we'll hope to have you both back on very soon, okay? We'd like that. Thank um, you. Take care. Great. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Gabby. Hopefully we connect. I hope so, Sarita. Take care now. Bye-bye.